Welcome to The Blessed Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Raquel Tolson, and this podcast is here to help you experience being blessed that transcends a mere hashtag. Now, you guys know I'm a firm believer that being blessed is a mindset and we have to make a daily decision to be blessed. I am broadcasting on WI TV7, Christian Broadcasters Network, a nonprofit charitable radio broadcast with the mission to empower, encourage, and educate. Now, if you are enjoying the Blessed Podcast, and I hope you are, please donate at www.wytv7.org. This month is April, and we are showering you with knowledge, not showers of knowledge for the month of April. Today, we are going to talk about um, money, money mindset, money, um, and it's going to be a little different because I was actually a guest on one of the other broadcasters um, podcast and we recorded it and I'm going to share it with you. So I hope you enjoy. Amazing show for you today. You don't want to miss it. Yes, April is Financial Literacy Month, but we're going to stretch this out just a little bit because we all need that extra little help. But before we get to that, I wanted to remind you guys, don't forget, we have the four-night luxury, luxury cruise getaway. Let me speak it correctly. The four-night luxury cruise getaway that you can win through financial confidence. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and follow the Financial Confidence Podcast. And email us at financialconfidence2021 at gmail.com. We want to hear your money success story. Oh, yeah. You want to hear more about that cruise? Well, guys, you can sail to Cozumel. You can sail to Nassau, Bahamas, or Ensenada. You make the decision. But what we need from you is your money success story. Don't forget, email that to us, financialconfidence2021 at gmail.com financialconfidence2021 at gmail.com. We'll be accepting those entries until May 8th and the announcement will be made on May 15th. All right, guys. So make sure you get in, get in, get in, right? Send it to financialconfidence2021 at gmail.com. All right, guys, for our show today, we have Miss Raquel Tolson in the podcasting studio. Raquel, how are you? Hey, I am good. I am real good. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, we're super excited to have you in the podcasting studio with us. Guys, you don't know, but Raquel is one of the other podcasting hosts here with WYTV7 Community Broadcasters Network. And we are here to share with you during Financial Literacy Month. But I'm going to have Raquel share a little bit about herself with you, the listening audience. Well, thank you. I am Raquel Tolson, Dr. Raquel Tolson. I, I, yeah, I, Don't I forget think the doctor, like doctor, okay? Raquel you work Tolson. hard for that, doctor. <laughs> I am the host of Blessed. And we, like she said, we are on, also on WYTV7. And I've only been, I think this is my second year with, um, with the podcast with WYTV7. So we're really excited. I am a former um, lawyer a former pharmacist, and I'm currently um, working um, my own business, um, Blessed Mind Money Mindset Coaching, and I'm a licensed insurance agent, and what I try to do is to help families to grow and protect their money, so I am really excited about, you know, financial literacy. The company I work with um, also is Five Rings Financial, and that is like huge financial education is just you know a huge part of what we do and I just because I'm a you know I, mine is a more spiritual I come from a spiritual place and I think a lot of people have like spiritual strongholds when it comes mm. to money so we, so we got to get our minds right so we can do our money you know get our money right I don't know if you remember that song was like got my mind on my money and my money on my mind right <laughs> yeah so you got to have your mindset right to do your money mm. Exactly, exactly. I'm I'm excited to talk to everybody about financial literacy. Awesome, awesome. So, Raquel, what we want to talk, since you want to share about financial literacy, we want to know a little bit about your money mindset, your relationship with money growing up. So, with that said, what was your first job and what did you do with that first paycheck? 
that you know what it's it's really easy for me to answer this question if anybody knows me they knew my mother Ruth Tosin and she was you know she was in charge she was Lord and in charge of everything <laughs> my first job was at AMC theaters oh, let me tell you and this is like on side note I had to buy me some stock at AMC because I love, I, and that's where I, I go now. When I want to go to movies, I go to AMC theaters. Mm-hmm. Let me stop talking about it because I'm not getting any money for this right now. I'm just playing. <laughs> since I got stock, it works, right? Right, right. <laughs> but um, so my first, I was selling popcorn and, you know, upselling the, the sodas and everything could get to the, go to the movies free. So I was always like the benefits, you know, it's, it's about more than just a paycheck. It's about what the benefits are. And as a teenager to get to go to the movie for free, that's a huge benefit, right? Absolutely. Right. So my first check, though, it went to my mother. <laughs> and the check after that, and the check after that. And you know what? People are like, how do you give your mama your check? Because she my mama, and she asked for it, and she told me to, and I okay. lived with her. So okay. she didn't make me pay rent or anything. But what she did, she gave me an allowance out of my check. Cause she didn't trust me and she was right. Cause I like most teenagers, I would have spent it on clothes cause I wanted to look cute. She would allow me to spend it on whatever I wanted to, the money I gave, she gave me, but then she put some up in savings because she said, right, okay, you're going to college. You're going to need some money. She was like, I'm not rich. Right. So, <laughs> and you know what happened when I went away to college? I say, my need some money. She's like, okay. She had the right. money to give me because I had saved. It was my money. She was just giving me the money that I had, you know, stopped away that, well, she had stopped away for me. <laughs> so my mom said, you know, it was my mom was like, we gonna save. Yes. Yes. I, I love that. So one thing I want to go back to that you said, you said it's a, about the benefits, right? What mm-hmm. are the benefits that you can now achieve as a result yeah, investing in the stock in the company that you own was definitely, um, that you work with, right, was definitely a benefit, right? right. But um, I think my mom and your mom were related because, <laughs> we, but she said, she said that we were helping to pay the bills in the house. That was the way she, she framed it. Mm-hmm. But on the other side of that coin, we had a very similar situation. I, I was like, mom, it's time to go to college. She just wrote a check and gave it to me. And I, I went in that first year, but I made the mistake. So here's where my money mind was set was at. And maybe y'all's too, because when my mom paid the money, financial aid also kicked in then they gave me a refund check <laughs> I got those I got, I got those two I got those two Ooh, okay. crab legs and steak for dinner <laughs> right yeah. right and in college you were the stuff if you could <laughs> yes. you had something other than ramen noodles you were the stuff right yes. Yes. you could tell when financial aid distribution was because people ate really good Right. Now, but you know what? But I will say this, though. My roommate and I, because this was more like my sophomore year, the freshman year, my mom still was, you know, really much in, pretty much in charge. But my senior, sophomore year, when I kind of got out the dorm and had to start like kind of paying bills and things. So I, she allowed me to keep a whole lot more money once I got out my freshman year. Right. But my <clears throat> instead of going to the restaurants or going out and spending the money. We went to the grocery store okay. and bought steak and, you know, stuff like that. So I still felt like we were being very, we were being responsible because we, we cooked it at the house and that right. saved a lot of money. Yes, yes, it did. It did. So yeah. let's um, talk about now, how did you get from the point um, of working at AMC to mm-hmm. where you are today? Because you said you're a former lawyer your Mm -hmm. former pharmacist, right? So we've done several different things. Mm -hmm. So help us to get through that process. What is that mindset like? Because to become a doctor in the midst of all that, that's no small feat, right? So help us to walk through that process. What did that look like for you? Um, and to get to the point today that you are. Yeah. So the mindset that I've had, my mother, and of course it was my mom and my dad too. I mean, not leave him out, but my mindset was always um, biblical. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And now I just add through Christ consciousness because I think that people need to understand that that, that consciousness wasn't just in Jesus. 
it's available mm-hmm. to all of us. So I say through Christ consciousness, that's, yes. you know, that um, strengthens me and having that belief, you know, and I was smart. I'm not going to lie and say I wasn't a smart person, but I personally don't believe that I was born smart. I just don't believe that. I just believe that my parents instilled in me that I couldn't do, I can. And when I say can do, I can learn all things. Right. I said, let, let's just do that part because you got to learn it before you do it. So it's like, I can learn and having that mindset. Yeah. So pharmacy, like, oh, that's hard. No, because I can do all things. I can learn anything. So that wasn't hard. Um, and then going to law school was, that was, um, that was about me loving TV, watching TV, LA Law and Blair Underwood. <laughs> And they made laws, they made it look really sexy. Right, right, exactly. exactly. It wasn't, it wasn't. And so I, I couldn't do it because another one of my mindset is that, you know, people think that you have to work hard. That, that's not my mindset because it says his joke is easy, his burden is light. Right. That to me means that work shouldn't be hard. And I'm not saying that I don't believe in what well, quote unquote hard work that I won't work, mm-hmm. but if it's hard, then that means that what I, my mind said that his burden is, you know, his yoga is easy and his burden is light, then that's not correct. So right. I, when it, if I'm in something, I'm like, oh, I don't like this. This is hard to go. I can't do it. So mm-hmm. I stopped being a lawyer and eventually I stopped being a pharmacist too. Because when it's all said and done, it's a, knowing my purpose and my purpose is to help people. So I was helping people as a lawyer. I was helping people as a pharmacist and now I help people as an insurance agent. And financial, um, you know, money mindset coach. I'm still helping people. Still my purpose. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I, so I love that. I love that. And understanding that it's not about working hard, but it is definitely about working smart, right? Mm-hmm. So how do you now, um, and, and I love that you said you identified, you know, whether or not it was something that you liked or that was easy for you or not not necessarily easy for you, but that you didn't have to work too hard, right? So you made that transition, if you will, to the area that you're in today. So in thinking about the clients that you work with, um, what are some of the top three misconceptions that they have um, in your area that you would like to help my audience dispel today? Well, it's really interesting. So I wrote a book a while ago, Why Are Church Folk Poor? <laughs> Elevate your thoughts and exercise your faith to live an abundant life. Okay. That's the first part. That's like the first thing is, you know, it really is about when I was saying, I will, you know, everybody get grew up in church. They heard that I can do all things, right? I think that's right. Nice. But most people like, oh, I can't do that. Oh, that's too hard. I, I can't do that. I can't learn but we just kept saying, I can do all things. So it's like, okay, let's, we, it's one thing to memorize scripture. Mm. And even if it's not scripture, if it's just like a great quote, it's, it's one thing to memorize it, but you have to elevate your thinking to actually believe it. Yeah. And once you believe it, right. So one of the things with money, people believe this, that money is the root of all evil. You heard that before? absolutely <laughs> well first of all it's a wrong quote it's the exactly. love exactly but exactly. even that the love of money like you have to even take that because people say oh i look because i enjoy money <laughs> so absolutely I, I enjoy what money can do for me and i was like but I, it's a right having a right relationship with money and so but we get that get stuck in our head and then the main one that used to get stuck in my head was it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle Right. That rich man to get into heaven. Now, if you was raised in church, there is only one goal, and that is to get in heaven. So if you're telling me to be rich, I can't get into heaven. So what we do, we hold on to that and we self-sabotage ourselves. Mm-hmm. So let me spend my money. And then and then like in, in good church people, they give right. it away. They don't spend it, they give it away. They might give it to the church, they'll give it to right. the needy, but they it's still step self-sabotage. They don't want to keep it because they don't want to be rich because I got to get into heaven. So let me get the money. And then we get preyed upon. I'm not saying all churches. Right, right. Don't have your people shooting me. They're sending me mad. I'm not saying all churches, but there are some people that prey on that. So mm-hmm. they like, oh yeah, give to church. Give, 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 give. And we're giving because we don't want to be rich. 
But then some of the people that we give it to, they rich, 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 rich. You know what I mean? Right, right. So that's like one of the mindsets that you got to kind of get people to self stop self service. Ah, self-sabotaging and one way another way we do that is by not budgeting Mm -hmm. because we like that's such a restriction no it's you spending with intention stop thinking of a budget as being restriction but spending with intention absolutely because if you don't you self-sabotage you know Mm -hmm. so really getting people to think about that the self-sabotage so I think that's too right the right (laughs) <laughs> but so and then the, the the last thing that I really focus on is using an insurance policy to close the wealth gap. Now, let's just talk about a regular life insurance policy. If, if, if a parent had two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of life insurance on them. Right. Mm-hmm. They passed away, let's say, at 70 or 65, however. And they left that two hundred fifty thousand dollars to their child. Would that not could that not change? That situation, if that child could buy a home, pay off a home, and property real estate is a great investment, right? Is is great is is a, a great thing wealth because you can pass it down, right? Mm-hmm. So just that alone, but do you know how many people don't buy insurance, life insurance, or they just get enough to bury themselves? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they get the $10,000 policy that they pay a lot of money for, they bury themselves, but then they, they don't, they miss the opportunity. Another reason why it's a great thing, because that family gets it tax free. Hello, that, that right there is huge. It is, absolutely. Tax free. So you mean to tell me even a hundred thousand, I can get a hundred thousand dollar tax free? It's all mine? Where, where they do that at? With a life insurance policy, but we won't like we have like that's a mindset though that we have to change. And then, so even when people get into that, so now I don't necessarily just sell life insurance. I sell what is called living benefits. You know, Mm -hmm. it has a living benefit, so you don't have to die to get the money. So all these people last year they got COVID. So if you had a living benefits policy and you got and went in the hospital, had to get on all this stuff. Some of these people get like a hundred thousand dollar bill, yeah, right? Yeah. But even the person that didn't have a hundred thousand dollar bill, they didn't go to work. They may have, you know, not. They may have lost their jobs and stuff. A living benefits policy. When you're that sick, they would have given you. They would have let you accelerate the death benefit, and you could have pulled on that. So you could have got like up to seventy five percent of a life insurance policy. So let's just say if it was a hundred thousand dollar policy, you could have got seventy five thousand dollars to help tide you your family over. Wouldn't that have been wonderful? And then you wouldn't have had to pull out pull out out of your savings, out of your your retirement. You wouldn't have had to sell your stocks. Prep, closing the wealth gap, right? Preserving right. your the finances. And this is what I'm trying to teach people is, but that's you have to change your mindset to even think like that. Right. Awesome. Yes, absolutely. So let's go back to your first point and, okay. and put you put that book back up there again. What is it called now? Why our church? Why our church of poor. poor? Come on, somebody. <laughs> you know, people don't like that title, though. You know that, right? So I, I well, I love it. And, and I'm going to tell you why I love it, because you hit on several things um, in, in, in breaking out those scriptures. And I think the number one problem for most people is that they pull those scriptures out in singletons. They don't go back and look at the whole story so they can get the full picture, because I also know that God says I have come so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So what also plays into that, if not money? See, the reason church folk are poor, hello, somebody. Come on, preach, girl. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) See, See, I I just, and I am thankful, you know, for these types of conversations so that we can, can begin to shift that, that mindset, shift that conversation. Yes, tithing is awesome, amazing, mm-hmm. give, right? You mm-hmm. give, not only in your money, you give in your time, you give in mm-hmm. different resources. That's what tithing is. But until we get the whole picture, we miss the boat. And in mm-hmm. that case, that wealth gap is going to continue 
right? Yeah. To be prevalent, to be over this, what they say, 200 years before uh, the minority populations can close the wealth gap between the whites and the blacks. When in actuality, you just gave an example with the life insurance policy that'll help yeah. shrink that within what? 10 to 20 years. Because yeah. if they take that life insurance policy, invest mm -hmm. it wisely, okay, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. What seven years? The rule of seventy-two. I know I'm preaching to the choir. Yeah, yeah, seven yeah. years at that eight percent interest. Guess what? You doubled your money significantly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Significantly. Doubled. Yeah, girl. Yeah. 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 Let, yeah. let, let me. And, 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 and you know what? And, and 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 I always say because a lot of times when Big Mama died, right? That house that Big Mama had. Yeah. They, they fight over it, first of all, but then they said, because when I was an attorney, I used to do probate, you know? Okay. So, yeah. so you know the people whole story. People used to fight over these little houses, right? As opposed to, let's just say, let's just make sure it, be, it stays in the family. Exactly. Who need a house to live in? Who, who right. among us in the family need a house to live in? Right. Stop being so selfish. Why well, I need my peace. It ain't me. It's the family Not house. Your peace. Let's just make sure that the, the house is paid off that the, the insurance and the taxes get paid every year and whoever needs to live in it, who we can trust to be a good steward over that house. So that means this family always had, nobody in the house, in the family has to be um, homeless. You know, that's real. So you hit on another point right there. And that's another pain point that we talk about on financial confidence. And that's the fact that so many in our communities lose their homes, those family homes for mm -hmm. failure of someone going in and paying the taxes. The taxes. Someone goes to a tax deed sale or a tax mm -hmm. lien sale and scoops it right from under you. Why? Yeah. Because you didn't pay the taxes. Now you had the fees. You didn't pay the fees and you mm -hmm. let it linger. Now someone has come in for a measly thousand, two thousand dollars and taken away a family home just because we couldn't get on one accord. Yep, because we couldn't get on one accord. Yep. You know, because my father and my um and his siblings, they had one sibling who used to live right next door to my grandma. Well, he so his house, I forgot what happened, but so they moved, they uh, they gave him the house. Everybody mm -hmm. signed over the house to him because everybody else had this okay, we because this is a family home. We need to make sure that this house is good because we're not going to let it just slip away or anything. And somebody got to live in it. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? But it's still, it's, it's still in the family. You know, it's like when we, when we come together as one, like we, instead of everybody trying to win, it's not a competition. Mm -hmm. we, we, we try to win. We come together. It's like, this is all of ours. This is a place where we can all come. And it's got enough bedrooms where if somebody needs a place to stay, to go and stay for a while. Hmm. Yeah. So it's, hmm, I, all I know is one of the things that we try to tell people, every portfolio should have a life insurance policy. And it's not just about the life insurance policy, living benefits policy, but there's also um, an indexed account. You right. know, so there, there's a way that you can save money for your retirement in a life insurance policy or money for your children. Mm -hmm. and, and and you don't lose it. There's no risk of losing. Like when you put your money in a stock market, it's going up and down. You got to pull it out or, you know, keep it, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Right. With a life insurance policy, you don't have to do that. And with the indexed account, um, the IUL is called the IUL. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what that does, when the market goes up at the end of the year, you get to capitalize off that. But when the market go all the way down, guess what? You don't lose the money. You just stay right where you are. So you don't lose your principal. Now, because you like, because there's a board and you can't lose your money, they're going to put a ceiling on it to make it fair. But the ceiling is usually like nine, 10 percent. Right. And right now at the bank, you're getting 0.12 percent, I think. Point if, two. If, if you're getting that much. If you're getting that much, <laughs> right. So when you say I can get up to 10% and never lose my money. So that's like for a retirement savings. You don't want to be in a situation where people that had their money back in the day in 2008 and the stock market went down and they lost most of their money and it was time to retire. And they were like, oh, I can't retire because the stock market, I got to wait till the stock market go back up. 
you know, so you get these kind of accounts. And so, but just trying to get people to hear, because when they think investment, they only think of stock market. Mm-hmm. That's not the only place. It's like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Right. It, that, that's just, you don't do that. Diversify. I personally think that you should have some stocks and bonds. You know, you should have some money in the market, but you should have something safe that, you know, and not safe in the bank or safe under the mattress. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about safe that is still growing, but you can't lose it. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's um, very powerful in helping people. Earlier, you were talking about that self sabotage Mm -hmm. and not doing those things is the ultimate right way to self-sabotage not diversifying your portfolio because I can tell you in 2008 all of the 401ks and everything else was hit hard real estate was hit hard but guess what that comeback though Mm -hmm. After yeah. it started coming back up to 2010, after it started coming back up 2012, after it started yeah. coming back up, it was a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. And it's about positioning yourself to be ready in those situations and mm-hmm. not continuing to self-sabotage over and over and right. over. But how do you get to that point? You have to be educated first and foremost, but yeah. education alone gets you nowhere. It's taking the action steps, mm-hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. to get to that next point. So if you don't hear anything else today, make sure you write that down. I will not, I will no longer self-sabotage. I will take the steps needed to move to the next. Then you prioritize what that is for you. So your next is different from my next, it's different from Raquel's next, right? Right. But if you give as much to your thinking, your mindset around your money, as you give to your church, as hmm. you give to your children, as you give to your man or to your woman, whichever, right? If you give just as much to that, think about the difference you can make. We're helping you to make your money, keep your money and grow your money, guys, so you can do yeah. those things that you're called to do, build generational wealth and leave an inheritance for your children's children. So we get yeah. back to the um, insurance conversation, Raquel. Um, so what would you say then would be the best place to start? Because this is a new conversation for many and Mm -hmm. they know, um, they've heard, you know, people say you need life insurance or you need this, you need that. Mm -hmm. And I even had a a man tell me one time, he said, you know what, Lynn, I'm going to spend it and spend it until the wheels fall off. My kids not getting anything. What would be your response to that person well and and i guess because there's some people that you just can't reach but if it happened to be somebody that know the bible and i'm like but it says a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children right right so you want who who you want to be and then and then and let me just say this man i am one i am not judgmental whatever whatever works for you Great. You happy? I'm happy. Okay. But there, there's an intention. You know, if, if if you don't care for your, then that's fine. If you want to show your love in another way, then that's fine. I'm not going to say that leaving money is the only way to show your love for your family. Absolutely not. But as for me, <laughs> in my house, I got to right. We gonna right, serve right, the Lord. right. And, and, and when I say serve the Lord, I'm not saying that we're not doing nothing. This. What I'm saying is we operate in love. Right. That's, that's so that's like our 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 mission is love. So I'm gonna love my child mm-hmm. to make sure he has the he has what he needs, mm-hmm. and and in turn I'm training him to love his children, so they can have what they need. So my son is 26. He um just became a teacher for LA Unified. He has a second job with um Delta Airlines. And they just gave him a promotion, basically. So now he's working full time. He's working two full time jobs. Okay. Oh wow. So and he's at LA Unified. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lord have mercy, bless his heart. Okay. <laughs> so here's the thing. The first thing that I said we had to do was get him a house. Now, mm-hmm. I have a house. It's two two houses on one property. So I was like, hmm. Do I really have to have my house or should? 
So I'm selling the house to him because of the kind of property it is. People would pay us almost a million dollars to get this property. Right, right. So I'm like, no, I need out. He can have that. He can have it. You know what I'm saying? So now we started him thinking. So that means with having a mortgage, he's saying, I choose wealth, a generational wealth over partying. Because the money that he could pay, that he's paying for this mortgage, Mm. he can be out partying. Mm-hmm. being bad you see what I'm saying mm-hmm. but it's like mm, his mindset is right he's like because it's about generational wealth because he already has a love for his children that he don't even have yet right I love it love it right that that's two snaps <laughs> right okay, okay. <laughs> I, it's powerful, it's powerful. Yes. people have to think Absolutely. about it like that you know and then because I used I, I would ch- tease him but I really wouldn't tease him you know joking but serious like that uh but every kid you have you should be able to give them a house to Mm -hmm. you know to when you go they should be able to have a house so right now he'll have two home two homes on one piece of property but then I'm almost like but does that count because they can't they have to split that up so right now you should just only give have one kid and then buy another piece of property when this will go up because of course I didn't charge him what they right, right, right. so he is gonna grow and he can pull that money out and go buy another property and he can buy it outside of california but here's the other thing that people need to know that i found out when you sell your property to like a, a child a relative or whatever you can use the equity in the home for the down payment look at god so <laughs> that we had in the house we put a down payment on it so his mortgage is a whole lot cheaper than what it could be Hmm. building generational wealth now i could have said nah bro you can get that three and a half percent fha loan and i'm taking all my money and going but that's that's not the love that's not the the generational wealth thought right so i was like and i can say it's not wrong if somebody would do that it's just not where we were our our intention is to build generational wealth, to close the gap. So that's what we had to do to do that. Absolutely. So, I love it. I love it. And one of the things that I love is that it's a, a leg up, not a hand out that you've now given your child. And it's until we get that mindset right. that we miss the boat. Yes. See, the problem is many in the community see it as a hand out instead of helping somebody up to the next right. level. Because right. I think, I, and I don't know, I don't want to, I'm going to call a spade a spade. Don't call it. Do it. It, right? it's, the, it's that spirit of jealousy. If I didn't have it, or if I had to work so hard for it, why am I just going to give it to someone else? So you're not operating in the spirit of love, like Miss Raquel yeah. said. No. Operating in the spirit of love puts mm-hmm. your mindset in a completely different place, right? Yeah. Lead you want to make love. these things happen. Lead with love, even when it comes to your finances. Everything yeah. you do, you should lead in love. Even if you are not a Christian, lead in love. Just awesome. lead with love, period. Awesome, period. Yes, I love <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Raquel, I can sit here and talk to you all day, but I know we do have to close out this. Are there any closing words before we close out the show? Well, I just want to let everybody know I have a um, little free booklet. It's called Mind on My Money. And um, we'll put it, I guess, somewhere so they they can go and get it. But they can go to my website at um, www.raqueltolson.com and they can find it there. But like, seriously, my main, I'm, I'm so loving that we connected yeah. on WYTV7 because I know that God means for us to help shake some things up and, and, and close the wealth gap. Absolutely. And we can only do it through education and talking and, and sometimes saying stuff that people don't want to hear. They absolutely, they don't. Those courageous conversations is what I call them. So, yes. Raquel, thank you for having a courageous conversation. Guys, 
mine on my money and my money's on my mind, right? Yes, don't forget to uh, check out her re free resource that she has available to you. We'll also be sharing this on our social media as well. So you guys can download that. So look for it um, on my social media page on Financial Confidence Podcast. We thank you so much for tuning in and sharing with us, Miss Raquel. Uh, we definitely have to have you back again. It was fun. I appreciate it. And I am going to put this on blessed so they okay. can hear it two times. Okay. They it. Awesome. Like, yeah. awesome. Awesome. Well, guys, we thank you for tuning in for Financial Confidence here on WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network, WYTV7 Community Broadcasters Network. I'm your host, Lynn Demons. That's Demons, no demons here, y'all. D-E-M-M-O-N-S. We thank you so much. If this has been invaluable to you, head on over to WYTV7.org, leave a donation so we can continue to do what we're called to do. That's to educate, empower, and encourage you. Guys, my mind's on my money and my money's on my mind. All right. We'll see you guys next week at the same time. Until then, you stay safe. We said a lot and Lynn is was awesome so you can catch Lynn Demings on WYTV7 just go to um, the website www.wytv7.org and you can find out more about Lynn Demings and financial confidence I hope you guys enjoyed it it was a fun time we had a good time and I hope you got something that you can um, can use and if, and if you need help, just reach out to me. You can go to my website, www.raykeltolson.com and get the free booklet. And if you need to chat, you can hit the chat button and we can chat. So until next week, be blessed.